Sayyidi, earlier before you have mentioned the reality of the moon, how it represents guidance. The red moon is a sign. What is the reality upon the blue moon? Wallahi, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, the, the most important is, is the moon. That the, its hue, its color, its tajallis of whatever Allah wanted to signify. Why the red was important? Because the moon represents uh, maqam al-fardani, the highest of the awliya for this region, this area. And that's the highest of the Muhammadan servants that whom have the highest level of humility and the most amount of uh, testing because it symbolizes the service of the moon continuously bombarded and as a result its humility allows the perfect reflection of the light of the sun and that light of the sun is a guidance for earth so that the earth is not cast into darkness. Without the sun we don't have an existence on this earth. That's why everyone should study the effect of the sun, the moon and the earth. You can't live on earth without a sun, you would freeze to death, you can't breathe, you can't eat, nothing. And the moon is also has an effect on the energy of the inhabitants of the earth because of its ability to affect the tide and the gravitational pull of the earth. So Allah gives a big secret within this reality that you're not here on earth just by yourself. There's many things of cause and effect that govern you of which you don't know anything from it. People don't understand what type of authority are governing over them. They don't even understand the sun, its power over people on earth and the moon's power over people on earth. And above that is the wali and the awliya who represent the sun and the moon and that's why on the hijra, twelfth month, the important surah for the beginning stage is Surat Al Yusuf. Allah said, This is a beautiful story. And this servant of what he reached, Sayyidina Yusuf was what? He said, Allah gave me authority over the sun, the moon, and the eleven planets. Gave an authority. He's giving now his position not of his risalat on earth but he's saying, I've been given authority over the sun and the moon. Forget about eleven planets what that represents but the sun is under my command and the moon is under my command. And his father said, oh this is big, your brothers are prophets, don't talk about that and, and begged him to hide, to hide that information but alhamdulillah the this Ayatul Kareem, the Qur'an is, is bringing for us that Allah wants to disclose that there are servants governing, you know, these planets and these stars. There are angels that are governing them. So they themselves if you don't understand their function of the planet and the sun that's an ignorance and if you don't understand their function you will never possibly understand the one whom is in control of that reality what is their state and what is their responsibilities. So alhamdulillah we have all the mysteries of, of creation all around us and that's why Prophet asked for us is seek knowledge, you know, seek realities, try to seek an understanding through your spirituality of a higher understanding not just the material dunya and Instagram and on the YouTube uh, basic uh, information but seek these realities so that we can take a path. Once we understood these realities then we begin to understand, okay, okay so the shaykh is like the moon. If I'm the earth then I need exact system of what Allah has set up. So the earth doesn't operate by itself. So as a result Allah is showing us a system of guidance that you who are on earth you are in need of a sun and a moon. So who is your sun and who is your moon? You can't say you don't have it then you're not operating as if as how Allah operates His creation. It says, do you see the earth? Say, yes that's you. 
the earth symbolizes and sun. Who's your sun and who's your moon? So that which is eternal, how does it dress you and bless you and provide for you? And that eternity you think at first, so is that Allah? But la sharik, there's no partner, la shabi, la shabi, there's nothing like unto Allah. Your first level stage may say Allah, that's okay because it's kindergarten. Second level will say the same, third level will say, but very advanced levels will say and, and want to keep the reality of tawheed and that it's not Allah There's nothing like unto Allah it's insulting to think that it's Allah Allah's its power and its might. So what is the sun? It's the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad that Allah that's why this Nat Sharif saying, your light is the light of the sun and the moon, you are our shams, you are, you are our qamar. And so all these realities of these Nat is from the awliya because they're in charge of these planets. They understand what Allah has put in charge for their soul and what their soul is responsible for. So means, who's the son of my life if I'm going to run my galaxy like Allah runs His galaxy? Who's my son? Who's my eternal light that always shines upon me and, and that light gives me my life, my, my purpose, my understanding, my sweetness, my character, my breath, my sight? And that's Nurul Muhammad Then who's my moon? And that are the awliya and that's why we recite that Qamarun is because these awliyaullah they are reflecting the light and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad because they are continuously in the orbit of following the sun. As a result of following the sun they are continuously shining the light upon their students. And that's what the reality and that's the amazing uniqueness of the moon. You know the earth makes this sama, makes the, the whirling and it whirls around its axis. But the moon has its own unique whirl in which it never flips, it always keeps one face continuously facing this, the earth and never shows its other side. So it means that it's always facing the reality of Prophet reflecting that reality upon the earth, upon their students and, and that is the reality of guidance. When Allah want to grant Waliyun Murshidun, one whom not only Rijal that he was trained as a Rijal, that Allah then raised him to the rank of Abdullah from Ibadullah and gave that servant ilm. It was granted an ayn and as a result Allah dressed the servant with alim, ancient knowledges of the Divine the Presence. And then from that rank of knowledge and ibadullah then Allah granted them sainthood which is the Divine oceans of knowledge and proximity. Waliyun Murshidun is whom Allah granted all that and made them from Sifat al-Irshad to guide and their system of guidance is more powerful than the sun and the moon. That's why I said they guide through the reality of the soul and that's why the sun and the moon and the earth are very important understandings when Allah will say, I show you upon the horizon and I show you what's within yourself. So you within yourself you say, why well, I need a guide? Why I can't just do this myself? Well they say, Allah is not doing it on the outside like that. He's not putting the earth and let the earth just do what it wants. Everything on earth is based on the sun, its effect and how you breathe and eat is based on that light and the effect of the moon, how you're going to be raised and roshed and, and, and brought up. Even it can affect the water within the, the earth. Imagine what the moon its energy can do to insan and to a human being, the light within the shaykh's reflection. So alhamdulillah all of these are, are in front of us and people should seek out those realities inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. 
I am new to the path and I see and feel your light, although I'm experiencing the path with fresh eyes and feel a bit lost in the formalities. How can I step in wholeheartedly? Email help me at nurmuhammad.com and don't worry about the formalities. Just email us and the first step is to make that introduction to introduce yourself and that you're on this path to support, to participate, to share links, you know, make it to be real and active for yourself. And then we'll send you an email on how to learn to make the muraqabah, the tafakkur, the meditation. That is the foundation of, of everything, that when you spend that time and begin to learn how to make the connection, visualize the presence of the shaykh and that you feel the reality of the shaykh. Someone who doesn't meditate and doesn't do their tafakkur, their contemplation has no understanding who their shaykh is. And that's why in, in tariqah, especially Naqshbandiya, it was forbidden but for some reason it's not being taught anymore. But not for our channel and not for our coordinates. It has to be taught. If you don't know, you don't meditate, you don't know who the shaykh is and what the shaykh is capable of. And that's what Allah says, approach the house through the correct door. If you don't approach through the correct door then you're, you're coming through what? You don't know who that person is, you don't know what their energy is, you don't know anything of their reality. And then what happens is then you become very superficial, everything is just physical. And when they don't know who their shaykh is, they keep bouncing around to this shaykh, that shaykh, this shaykh as if going to many, many doctors and going here, going there. That's a sign of someone who doesn't know who they're dealing with. So that's, that's the danger of not making tafakkur. When the student understands that my, my life is to be of service, my life is to connect and begin to connect, then the fires, these energies begin to dress the servant, they never go anywhere. They sit right there doing their practices because they understood that now with that connection I have to give myself with all my loyalty to receive that fires and to receive that energy so that the shaykh can complete his ni'mat. The, the, the gift that Allah want to send can be completed upon the servant. When the servant is not loyal, not dedicated and going here and there, left and right and north and south, what shaykh is going to send any fires? They won't because there's, there's nothing there, you send a little and they go somewhere else for, for what? So it's, it's a part of the whole practice, learn the connection, make the connection. When you have that connection then all these energies and all this, these realities begin to open inshaAllah. Assalamu alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa We see a lot of uh, shaykhs and peers in Pakistan that do mm. visions and miraculous things but then they don't pray. Yes. How is that? Because they're not a shaykh. The one who doesn't observe the sharia and uphold the sharia to the best of their ability, you may find a fault in somebody and that's not a allowed in, in sharia itself either. You're not to judge people but when you see that they outright don't pray and don't uphold Islam and Islamic uh, jurisprudence then that's not a shaykh, that's a magician. So if you're looking for miracles you're already in danger. If you're looking for quick relief from the problems that you have put upon yourself by your actions and looking for a magician to take them away, of course you're going to find many magicians and they don't really go away, they actually really add a lot of problems. They may look like a healing and they may look like a relief but it's, it's something much more harmful. So Naqshbandiyat al-Aliya then it's not like that. And that's why the people come and ask for immediate relief, there's no immediate relief. Ask for you know uh, all the rizq to be opened and money to be flowing and actually Naqshbandi is the reverse, they're going to slow down all your money so that they have your full attention. 
so that everything is slowed down and that you're here to reach towards your reality. So Naqshbandiyat al-Aliyya is something if all tariqahs are of a reality, Naqshbandiyya is its essence, most powerful, most connected and is the essence of all tariqahs. As-salaamu alaykum Ya Shaykh Walaykum as salam Ya Sayyidi, when I do a lot of zikr I become seriously ill and bedridden. How can I overcome this condition? It's a battle, I really fighting it out, I really need your guidance. Sure inshaAllah don't do a lot of zikr, do the what's been prescribed. So the awrad is, is not a lot of zikr, so you do the daily etiquette. You do the daily amount for the connection, you do whatever has been given on a prescription. So imagine again this is like a doctor's office, if antibiotic you know 500 milligram a day is good for you and just because you have the bottle you decide you want to take 2000 milligrams a day you'll shut down your liver and your kidneys. You can't prescribe for yourself and just take anything you want. If one is good for you five doesn't mean it make it better. So that's why Allah gives to them, Prophet gives to them from Atiullah, Ati Rasul wa Ulul Amri minkum. So these Ulul Am whom we, we can only speak from Nashbandiyat al Aliyah, then when they give a nusqah, a prescription and an advice, you have to follow that. And that's not a lot of zikr. So you do the minimum of its recitations and its practices so that to build your energy. At the same time you have to make the muraqabah tasawwur or to, to, to connect your heart with the ruhani of the shaykh so that the energy can be all around the servant. If the servant is surrounded by difficulties and energies that they can't understand, imagine some of these people whom are related to families of a very extreme ideology, those are, 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 are very horrific energies. So if they try to do a lot of zikr, a lot of that negative energy may be trying to attack them to stop. So again the prescriptions are very specific. You do the aura, the, the etiquette, the minimum etiquette and then you connect your heart so that the presence of the shaykhs can be in that environment. So they, the energy, when you're meditating the shaykh's light is all around you so that the shaykh is there with you. The ruhaniyat of the shaykh and the, and the, the world of light can be everywhere, its immensity and its power is something unknown. That's what we're talking about in manifestation. When Allah gave this power. Uh, Bani Adam, the children of Adam they don't understand the power they have. That when they want to connect and they call upon something as positive as this reality, that reality will manifest in front of them. And as a result they keep making the connection, the connection, the connection and it begins to stay. And then the connection of the, of the shaykh is always there and that shaykh comes with all his shaykhs and all the energy that attach to that. So then that begins to change the entire environment of that person, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah I was very soft and subtle in my heart, I could cry easily but now everything has changed, it's the exact opposite. Heart has become hard and struggling with sins, what can I do? Um, try to take yourself back to the, the state that you were in. What were you doing that your heart had the khushya and softness? That the, the salawats, the practices, the du'a, the compassion within the heart inshaAllah and try to think of what I was doing at that state that was working and my heart was soft and life wasn't so busy and then try to regain that state. That state is an important state to be in, a state of softness and compassion, hard against oneself and easy against other people. But if the state turns the opposite where you're easy on yourself and hard on people, it becomes fasiq, it becomes incorrect. And then we know that then shaitan is playing with us. When we're hard on everybody 
and easy with ourselves. Then shaitan is playing with us and we have to regain then to be hard upon ourselves and always to be compassionate and soft with other people inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Allah. What's the reality of astrology? The reality of astrology? I, I don't know astrology but the the what Prophet described that even if there is a truth in these subjects it's still false. So it means that different people may take a different understanding and manipulate its understanding with jinn and with all sorts of foreign energies and foreign knowledges. As far as the Islamic perspective then that's something very deep and very few people have its understanding. But the majority of the gypsy knowledge you should abstain from. People who want to read days and read hands and read leaves and, and tell you that this is this and this month is this. It's Islamic understanding is very rare and not taught today. What are the white days, what are the dark days and that each day is dressed by a huruf. The first day of the month is dressed by alif and it goes by not abjad but by the normal direction of the huruf. The first 15 days are white days, the last 15 days are the black days, the dark days. So that understanding is, is not understood anymore. The effect of, of the heavens upon the servant, the effect of the huruf upon the servant and the effect of the moonlight upon the servant. So the first 15 days of white and why we're going towards the white is because the sun is energizing that tajalli upon the moon and these are the days in which the moon is taking that light until it's full moon and sending all of that tajalli upon the earth. Then as the moon is entering into a state of dying then it becomes the black days in which it's now going and receding from its full moon state. So those are different understandings, those are not understood on this earth right now but very rare places in the Middle East maybe. But the bulk of what we understand from astrology and, and gypsy understandings is, is not accepted and dangerous. When you go to fortune tellers and, and the gypsy people they will grab you, they'll do magic upon you and then these creatures are assigned to you to continuously bombard you and make you into a state of fear until you give them money. And then you keep giving money for something to go away but then they send more. So they're the ones sending it and extorting money from people to take it away. So there are many, many dangers. But from whatever we teach on the website nurmuhammad.com then alhamdulillah that's the extent of the astrology that they want us to understand of the sun and the moon and the, each month has a tajalli. And these are the 12 buruj, what do you call the constellations that has a, a deep understanding. But most important is understand the, the moon phase. So this is the third moon. So we're in the third constellation and this is then the reality of the opening of the birth of Sayyidina Muhammad And the third and what the three represents is the birth of creation. For Allah is one, Sayyidina Muhammad is two because he's the reflection of one and three is the creation of uh, Adam and our souls. Because uh, Sayyidina Muhammad comes from La ilaha illallah, we come from Muhammadun Rasulullah So many of these realities inshaAllah, those are enough to study than somebody telling you okay you're this and this month is this and your colour is blue and your ring is this. As Alaikum Shaykh. Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. There are people on the internet, people called ex-Muslims who are writing bad things and lies about Islam and Holy Prophet. How should we deal with these people? Run. Dajjal. That uh, the fitna of Dajjal and, 
and disgruntled people. It's like a… we describe like a rat. How do you know you have a rat in your house? You see the poopoo everywhere. You see the dropping everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. You look on the counter, anywhere you look you're going to see that the poopoo dropping everywhere. That if you start to get near that, that's actually what kills people. So ta'un and plagues is not the rat biting you but the feces of the rat was contaminating everybody. So their sickness and their disease was being transferred with that waste. So what then shaitan makes a rat to do is to drop its droppings everywhere and that becomes the fitna that they begin to post. So we had a picture on the site of, of a rat that was typing. So now these are technology rats, they drop their poo everywhere and they come against every shaykh. They come against every shaykh's teachings, everything, everything, those immediately block off and Allah will deal with them. But to engage then you already got contaminated, you know you start to try to drop and touch the droppings, you're already contaminated because now you're, you're involved with these, these things. So immediately block that information, block that site, block that uh, YouTube and save yourself from getting black plague and ta'oon. If that dropping hits you and you get affected by it, your faith will drop and that's all the shaitan wants and spread this, oh my god is that really, is that really happening? No it's not uh, really happening. These are all just shaitan disgruntled and, and they, their job now, their mission now is to work for dajjal. We're in a time of deceit and there are people who say that they're Mahdi, they're Dajjal. Anyone who calls themselves the Mahdi and thinks anywhere that they're Mahdi, that they're Jesus, that they're anything, they're Dajjal. Means they're operating from deceit and the power of Sayyidina Mahdi is so powerful that it's, it's not something that can be understood. Anyone who dare to say that they are that then Allah take them, beat them and throw them away. And for us stay away from their pages, stay away from any type of uh, fitna that they propagate that's against sharia, against everything. When Sayyidina Mahdi comes upon this earth it will shake and everyone will know that he's here. Until that learn to prepare to clean yourself for that arrival, have muhabbat and ishq and good manners and good characters and uphold the sharia of Sayyidina Muhammad How can you be ashiqeen and lovers of this reality and not uphold its laws? So alhamdulillah it's, 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 it's the immense deceit entering into the earth right now. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah What is curse? Is it a real? Is it… Uh, what are the signs of curse and how does it affect a person? Your curse is a, is a bad energy that when Allah want to punish somebody then those are people whom are punished. And Sayyidina Lut that when he was ordered to leave an area in which Allah was going to punish, he was told by the angels, don't look back because… and he was explained to him but not to the family, don't look back because these angels of azab, don't look at them. If you look at them because your eyes will have the power to call their light, you're going to die and perish. So when Allah's anger comes, don't look at it move away from it and go. And his wife was not of that reality, she looked back and as a result was immediately turned to stone because uh, these angels are not something to be looked at that when Allah's anger comes upon the earth and the works that they do is, is something to fear and to move from. So something that is cursed then we have no business with it, we don't want to look at it, we don't want to be involved in it. 
anyone trying to curse something is in a very dangerous condition because you're putting out from this power of manifestation, you put out a horrific energy and it goes. If Allah deems that the person you're thinking about doesn't deserve that, actually will take that and flip it back right to you and whatever you sent out will actually begin to come right back for you to cause you and your family harm. And unfortunately that if you had a protection it come and begin to decimate the family because they're weaker, they don't have a power to defend themselves from something you sent out. So it's, it's like playing with things that we don't understand like a laser gun, a very powerful laser light and you think you're going to shoot it at somebody and Allah doesn't agree and warrant what you think you're going to do to that person and immediately they shield it. And then that now laser is headed towards you and you may try to ricochet it but it enters into the home and hits somebody who's a more innocent nature. So this is not our way. We don't need to curse anyone and we stay away from everything, we do good and have the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And that answers then the question that if you're doing good and have this love, um, people can have lots of curses but unfortunately it's all coming back onto their heads. As Salaamu Sayyidi As Salaamu How to deal with <coughs> oppression? What to do if one feels like revenge? Allah grant the du'a of the oppressed. So anyone whom is in difficulty and oppressed, alhamdulillah Allah grant them their du'as. <coughs> so then you ask for nijad from a situation, Ya Rabbi I'm oppressed. That grant me a, a relief, grant me a way out of this difficulty and that doesn't involve the cursing of someone. But a relief is to open a door and move away from a, sit a subject, not to go back in and, and to, to hit everybody and that's just an analogy that if everybody bothering me in an area and, and my door is not to go back and hit everybody with a stick to get back at them. But grant me an opening and out of this situation, Allah may send you rizq, may send you many good fortunes because you were patient during difficulty and this is the life of the shaykhs. This is why when you have a shaykh that's the example. So if anyone's fearing anything look at the life of the shaykh. Their zikrs, their, uh, their practices, how many people cursing them on, on uh, around the world? They don't care for anyone, they're not scared of anyone. If Allah with them then others should be very scared because whatever they put out it goes right back to their them and, the, and their people. So that's not something to, to be feared and they are oppressed. Many people try to put difficulty upon them and Allah opens what He wants to open for them. So alhamdulillah, anyone who backbites you, they're carrying your, your sayyat. So what is there to be worried about? So everything is, is works to your benefit if you have patience and sabr. Somebody out there say, oh talking so bad, talking so bad. Alhamdulillah Allah made one person to carry your garbage. Every time you do something wrong they throw the trash on that person's head. So what better could be than you, you don't have to have that difficulty. So in a way it's Allah's blessing. That he carry, make people to have that character and they carry all these bad things. If that's the life they want to have then that's what they'll get. So if the servant whom is patient they find the wisdom and hikmah in everything. That Alhamdulillah Allah is my defender, I keep my love. Allah is my protector, I keep my love. That uh, who, who can uh, grant me anything when I'm oppressed except Allah so that's why we opened up tonight with that understanding. You think people want us to do these mawlids and they sort of line up and say, come, come take this, do that, do this. Or every time everybody they get together and they start to plot and plan, let's not go, let's not uh, promote their tickets, let's tell our people don't go. And they each one think they're going to stop this train. They come and say, we'll, we'll do something that this train will stop. But this train is under Sifat al-Aziz, 
I have yet to see anyone stop Allah If Allah wants it to happen, He's going to make the whole that, that will do it. If Allah wants it to be paid for, He'll send His servants whom will bring all the finances that are required for it. And if you want somebody to eat it and eat the food from it, Allah will send all His sick and His sincere servants whom He wants them to get the shifa and the healing from it. We just get out of the way and those whom hate, they, they can hate all they want but Allah's great, alhamdulillah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Yes. What is the difference between being humble and having low self-esteem? Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Being humble and having low self-esteem, inshaAllah. Very similar that but you have to guard oneself. So that's when we talk on these subjects of being humble, it's to efface myself. That everything I'm doing, so if I'm a person of low self-esteem, that whatever I do I'm doing for Allah whatever it good comes of my character or anything I'm able to do, I'm, I give the credit to Allah and keep myself to have a low profile. But the self-esteem, although they sound similar, this is of a different issue in the sense that why is that person feeling a, a low self-esteem? That they have to understand that Allah created them out of love and out of that love they have a purpose, they have a mission. And they have to rise from the depression and anxiety and all these different characteristics to reach to where Allah wants them to reach. And there are many traditions and teachings that if you don't love yourself how other people will love you? And if you don't respect yourself how will other people respect you? So you can be of a low self-esteem but be very humble. And that is a very loved condition by Allah But at the same time in, internally the servant has to have an understanding that Allah loves me, Allah has a mission for me because Allah doesn't want the servant to enter the oceans of doubt and, and dislike and then they harm themselves. So, that, so although you exhibit a good characteristic of, of keeping oneself low to the ground, we have to understand that Allah loves us and that Allah brought us like a, a winner. You know how many of our zuriyat didn't make it and we made it, we did the hajj, we came through the egg and we were given a life. Now with this life Allah is expecting something and if all the conditions are hard around people that the parents are hard, the environment was hard and all these things were sort of beating down and, and putting difficulty, then alhamdulillah Allah granted a najat through these teachings that connect your heart with Sayyidina Muhammad connect your heart with that light and with that love to feel the energy and the purpose of that love and what the mission of that soul is on this earth inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Should we do anything special for 12th Rabbil Awal? Sure, you can fast, make salawats, good actions, give food, everything. Everything you can imagine you can do. And uh, the love and then if you watch what the, the organization is doing, they're giving lots of food out, uh, they're, they're trying to make the orphans happy and, and repair orphanages, put out wells, uh, do maulis within our community so that people can come to this love or maybe they haven't been exposed to this type of love or maybe they have and they miss it. So all that we're doing is what everyone should try to do. And you can do it at a lesser amount, you can get a couple hamburgers and give them out to people or, or, or make a milad and miss it with your family and then do some salawats and zikr. So alhamdulillah all of these are the 
practices and the examples that uh, we live our life by inshaAllah. With that inshaAllah Subhanahu wa bika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamu ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.